Another regular season has come and gone, and it's finally time for playoff hockey, the best time of the year. First, let's talk about the last day of the NHL season. As Penguins fans, the last game of the season is usually meant to rest our stars and play a bunch of the young guys, because we already have our position locked down, but not this time. Even though the Penguins clinched a playoff spot, there were so many other possibilities that could have happened in this day, whether the Penguins get home ice versus the Islanders, stay where they were, or go down to the first wild card and play the Capitals in the first round. Now, I'm pretty sure I could speak for everyone when I say this. I didn't want to play the Capitals in the first round. That option was the last one I wanted, and a lot had to go wrong for it to happen. The Penguins had to lose in regulation, and the Carolina Hurricanes had to win. And oh boy, did that almost happen. So like I said, I wasn't able to watch tonight's game so I was keeping up with my phone. At the time, Nick Bukestad made it 2-1 for the Penguins. I was feeling kind of confident, uh, thinking the Penguins were going to win this. Then I checked my phone a couple minutes later. It's 2-2. And I'm like, all right. I tweeted, just bring this thing into overtime and call it a day. Just clinch that third spot. And then a couple minutes pass by. I check my phone again. I see 3-2 Rangers. And right there is where my heart dropped. I was like, oh my God, we're going to get a Capitals Penguins first round matchup. When I say I don't want this matchup in the first round, I mean it. I don't want the Penguins Capitals in the first round. And I was ready for it to happen. I, was, I accepted it. It was what, four or five minutes left. Rangers took the 3-2 lead. It's going to happen. I was freaking out. I just stopped working. I'm like, I can't work now. Are you kidding me? You expect me to work when the Penguins are about to play the Capitals in the first round? And then a bit later, I checked my phone again to see that the Penguins tied it up. I did not expect the Penguins to tie it up. I got so hyped. And who else? Jake Gensel for his 40th of the season, assisted by Sidney Crosby for his 100th point of the season. And then when overtime came, I was so relieved. You know, we got that one point that we needed to clinch the third spot. Now, I know some of you guys will get it, but I know others won't get why I'm so, you know, stressed to play the Capitals in the first round. It's not that I'm stressed because I'm open to a Penguins Capitals uh, second round matchup. It's just that my heart and my whole body can't take a first round Penguins Capitals. It's just too early. You can't just throw me in there. It's like doing a marathon of running and you just start running right away. You gotta, you know, you gotta jog a little. You gotta walk a little to get to the running. You gotta just throw me in the fire like that. And that's what the Penguins Capitals first round matchup would have been for me. I can't handle that this early in the playoffs. We gotta get that to the second round if we make it to the second round. So first, let's just begin with the positional breakdown. You know, forwards, defense, goaltending, who's got the edge in each position. So let's start with goaltending. I have the goaltending even. No team has an edge in the net, and I'll tell you why, because I know many will disagree. Even Penguins fans might disagree with me because they think that Robin Leonard or Thomas Grice would be the better goalie than Matt Murray. Let me tell you why I think it's even. So let me tell you how I came up to this conclusion with both goalies being even. So obviously you look at their numbers this year, you'll take Robin Leonard because he has the better numbers, obviously. But the way I look at it, yes, you determine numbers. So that's why I give the Islanders the edge there, but I give the Penguins the edge because Matt Murray has been there before and he's done it before. He's got the experience in the postseason for such a young age too. He's won his cups. He's won his series. He's been the clutch goal. He's made that clutch save in the playoffs. As for Robin Leonard, he hasn't really done much in the playoffs. So that's how I give it an even score. You know, Robin Leonard is hotter this year, but Matt Murray has been here before. Now let's move on to the defense. And I really, I'm not trying to be biased here. And I know some Islanders fans are probably clicking on this video thinking I'm just a biased Penguins fan, but I, I, I swear I'm not biased. I'm the least from biased. But I will say this, right? So on paper, I think the Penguins have the better defense. Now wait before you comment, because you look at the Islanders, they don't have that elite Chris Letang that the Penguins have. They have that elite number one defenseman that will play 30 minutes a night. So I think the Penguins have the edge on paper defensively because of Chris Letang edges them out because they don't have that number one guy. But on ice, I think the Islanders edge out the Penguins defensively because of the system they play. So on paper, you know, the Penguins have the names. But on ice, I think the Islanders will frustrate the Penguins because they play this good defensive system. Barry Trotz's system has done wonders for that team. And that's why I give the defensive edge overall to the Islanders by just a little bit because of how good their system is. So, so far we have goaltending, even defense, edge to the Islanders. Not by much though, but they do have the edge, I think, because of their system of how they play. Now we go on to the offense. As for the offense, I think the Penguins separate themselves from the Islanders here. I think they're just better down the middle, got the better depth, and... Uh, if the Penguins do win this series, it'll be because of their offense just overtaking the Islanders offense. I have the Islanders lineup right here and I'm just looking at it. You know, their first line is really good. Anders Lee, Matthew Barzell, and Jordan Eberle. But I still will take the Penguins first line over that. But they'll cancel each other out because that's what first lines usually do in these playoff series. What I think separates the Penguins though is the second line center. You look at Brock Nelson. I think Evgeny Malkin is way better than Brock Nelson. And overall, Crosby and uh, Malkin is way better than Barzell and Nelson. And that's how the Penguins were able to win so many playoff series. You know, Cups is by just 
beating the teams down the middle but i will give them this they do got the better fourth line they got one of the best fourth lines in the nhl in my opinion uh casey Sezikis, in my opinion is better than matt cullen as the fourth line center and a guy like matt martin even cal clutterbuck will be very annoying in a playoff series so we broke down each position now who do i think will win i think the penguins should win i mean personally i think the islanders are the best matchup they could have gotten obviously a team like tampa washington toronto boston are the no-nos the guys you don't want to play in the first round a team like carolina i think would be the second best matchup they still scare me a little bit more than the islanders just because of how they matched up against the penguins this year uh, a team like columbus even scares me more i think this is best case scenario i think the islanders are the best matchup for the penguins but that doesn't mean we should take them lightly because they could easily win this in six or seven if we do that and if the islanders do win this series i don't want anybody coming back here in two weeks commenting oh you thought the islanders were going to be easy oh whatever because i'm not saying that i'm not saying the islanders are going to be easy the islanders are going to be a tough opponent what i'm saying is this is the best possible matchup because we don't want to play the capitals we don't want to play columbus because that's going to be hell you don't want i mean carolina maybe but the way we played against them this year i'll stay away from that i think penguins islanders is going to be an extremely fun series for both teams i think this is actually going to be one of the best series in round one if not the best series because you're going to get a little bit of everything you know matt murray and robin leonard are going to put on a show they're great goalies you're going to get a little bit of that grit that i know some love not for me really i don't like that type of game but you're going to get the hits the fights and then you're going to get what's the best is the speed and the skill like i said overall this is just the best time of the year right playoff hockey uh, you have the good weather coming. Summer's right around the corner. Uh, basketball playoffs. I know some don't like that, but I'm interested, even though you know who's going to win every year. It's still pretty interesting to watch. Uh, baseball's back. I mean, personally, not a fan. I think it's boring, but someone out there likes baseball, so they're hyped. All right, before I end this video, I know it's getting kind of long. Let me just run through these questions real quick. I got some questions that I want to throw in here. Do you think Brian Dumoulin will be back for the first game? Uh, honestly, it's 50-50. Uh, it's up to Mike Sullivan, really, obviously, but I think he'll make the call of... Uh, does he want to rush him back? If he does rush him back, I think by game one, he's back. Game two, the latest. If he wants to wait for him to turn 110%, maybe game three, game four, the latest. But also depends how the series goes. If you keep him out game one, they win. You know, keep him out game two, they win. Then you don't need to rush him back. You know, game three, they lose. Maybe you bring him back game four. You know, it depends what happens in the series, really. So, I mean, I'm going to just say 50-50 for now. Threats from both teams. I'm talking who's going to be the difference makers. Well, obviously, Sidney Crosby, Evgeny Malkin. Then you have Barzell and Anders Lee. But I will say this. I'll tie in another question to your, to your question to make it a two for one. Do you think there will be any surprising players that will do good in the playoffs? Well, this question's a little bit more interesting because the other one is the obvious Crosby. You know, those guys are going to be the difference makers. But this one is more like the who's going to be the underdog player, you know, who's going to come out of nowhere and just surprise everybody. So obviously, I'm going to keep it safe and say Brian Russ for the underdog because he's always that underdog who always surprises everybody. But I'm going to, you know, spice it up a little bit and say Nick Bukestad. Thank you guys so much for the questions and thank you for watching. Don't forget to throw in your comments, you know, who do you think is going to win the series? Uh, you know, who has the advantage in net, defense, offense, you know, how many games, all that stuff. Throw it in the comments. So finally, that's it. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, I really do appreciate you guys, you know, spending your time watching what I have to say. Uh, it's really heartwarming. So I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching.